Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is video number seven in the 1913 Duesenberg Body Build Series. Uh, previously we did most of the body work. Um, I didn't film doing the sides, but I'll show you what I did on that. Next thing we're doing, do, doing is building a little uh, windscreen out of mesh and quarter inch rods. So I'll show you how I do that. And also the grill protector or the radiator protector. So uh, we'll go over those details and how we put that together and get you all caught up in where we are. We're almost done with this thing. This is very, very close to being ready to go. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so the 1913 Duesenberg, this is the very first Duesenberg ever built, Eddie Rickenbacker's race car, and most of the tracks were dirt. So they had these little, instead of a glass windscreen, it was more of a mesh windscreen to protect the driver from flying dirt and things like that. Um, it was common for them, the drivers, to get hit with dirt clods and pieces of the roadway. So they had that on there. Um, this looks like it might be brass. It's got kind of a brass look to it. So I'm not sure how we're going to accomplish that, but maybe we'll try some patina. So I started making a template, uh, seven inches wide, about four and a half inches tall from this bottom to the top. And it kind of drew out kind of what I wanted it to look like. And then a quarter inch rod, I just bent this in my vise and cut it to size. And then thread a piece of quarter inch rod, thread at the end so I could put these little wing nuts on it. And this thing down here, I bent basically by eye to fit the hood. And um, it fits on the profile of the hood pretty well. It kind of looks like a handmade piece, which the original did also. So I drilled some holes through it so we can use some bolts to bolt through the body and into that little half inch piece of tubing. Sorry guys, the steering wheel's in the way right up. Now let me get the steering wheel out of the way right up here. So this is going to bolt right through here, some nuts and bolts, so that's securely fastened and won't rattle loose. I was thinking about riveting it, but then I realized the rivets might be a little light for that much metal hanging on the end of it. Um, so once this is put together, I'm going to weld the rod to this rod here. And this is going to get wrapped with mesh. Let me show you what that mesh looks like. So this is the mesh. Um, this is steel. It kind of looks like it might not be, but it's coated with some sort of black coating, which is fine. I'm going to wrap it around that and crimp it down. I'm not sure crimping it will be enough or if I need to put a little adhesive on the back of it or in certain spots. Um, I was thinking about welding it, but I think that will just burn through this really thin material. And it may not even weld because it's got some sort of coating on it. So we'll see how that works out. So we're going to do the, the radiator surround basically the same method quarter inch rod all the way around the outside of it and then this mesh is going to go on there as well so let's get started on it so I thought I'd catch you up before I get moving on this other stuff on what I've done uh, that did not film I did not film making the sides so these side panels I just made a template out of cardboard and cut them out and mounted them and then fitted them to the frame the inside panel same thing and I just hammered them over to kind of create a void back here you see these are a little bit rounded over right here uh, the purpose of that is to provide sides for your for your hips, also to hide the brake lines that are running through the inside of here, so that you don't booger up your brake lines. Uh, you can see how it kind of goes, comes out on the other side. Um, anyway, those are pretty simple panels. There's no compound curves in these; they're just cut to fit. Uh, you get back far enough, you can see the profile of what we got so far. I think that's turning out pretty good. I'm really liking the profile; it matches up with the uh, Inspiration car pretty well. And um, yeah, so it's moving along pretty good in the home stretch. Okay, so the measurement for the grill piece is about 10 and a quarter, 10 and a half by 18. So I measured my first bend. This will be at the very bottom. So this is five inches over where I made my first bend. And you see there's a couple inches here that you lose. So when I put this together, I'll have to account for that. So the first couple bends will be straightforward. So I'm measuring from here, going up 18 inches to here, and that's where the bend will start. Actually, I need to bring it down two inches. Now I know how much Otherwise, it's going to be too long. So I'm going to adjust that a couple inches, however much this is here. I'm going to bring this mark down, and that's where the bend will start. So overall, each inch is top to bottom. So that's the goal here. Let's see how this works out. Okay, so this is how I'm bending it. I've got it in the vise. From here to the first mark, I took off about an inch and three quarters. So this is 18 inches from the, from the bottom of it to this top mark. This is where the top of it needs to be. So when I bend this... Um, Anyway, at the end of the arc, it should be that much. So this is where this, the bend is going to start. And according to this bend, if I get the same amount of arc in it, about an inch and three quarters from here to here. So we'll see how this works out. Okay, so I bent it and then had to rebend it. I took a half an inch off. You see the mark in there? I moved it back about a half an inch, straightened it back out, and then rebent it. And right now I'm at 17 and three quarters, which is pretty good. Um, I, 18 inches is exactly where it needs to be. 
but I think if we have a quarter inch under, it won't hit that little, um, it won't hit this piece up here on the top of that. So uh, let's actually see how this fits right now. Okay, so I just have it laying on top and that's actually pretty good. Uh, I think that's gonna give us plenty of room. Um, the top and the bottom, it's gonna look really good. So uh, let's keep on bending. Okay, so this will be the tricky part here, getting this last bend to match up with this one. So I think I've got it measured correctly. And um, anyway, let's see how it goes. Well, that's pretty successful. Um, so let's see how this fits on here. And we want it to be a little proud of the edges so the bracket tree can fit on there. So yeah, that's gonna work out great. So I'll get this trimmed down and welded and we'll fabricate some tabs for the sides. Okay, so it's trimmed to size and uh, holds together pretty well. So I'll get that welded up. I'll put it on top of the grill here. You can see kind of how this is going to work. Um, once that's welded, that'll pull that together. I'll weld little tabs on the side, and those will have little attachment points here. Um, so this is what we're trying to achieve. So those little tabs on the side, um, painted blue. So you can see them right there. Kind of a close-up photo here. Sorry, there's a glare on these from the little red lights. But uh, I was able to get some really good pictures of the, the original car when I was at the Phoenix Art Museum at the Legends of Speed exhibit. So. Um, anyway, so we'll put the tabs on here, I'll weld this together, put the tabs on, and then we'll wrap this mesh around it, see if we can get that to attach without too much drama. And uh, yeah, this is coming along pretty good. Okay, so I made some 5 8 inch wide tabs, and these are about 2 inches long. What they're going to do is, the rivet holes are already here, I'm going to rivet them in place, and then I'll set the, the distance here. Right now I've got to set it set at a half inch, that's with these pieces of wood are, but I want to, I'm going to shorten it down to a quarter inch, I think. Um, I think that'll look better. Half inch is a little bit too much space there, so uh, the inspiration car is very close to the radiator. So we'll get these mounted and uh, weld it on. Oh, I also got the welding already done on here, so I got to clean that up. But it's coming together pretty good. Okay, so we got the welding tabs, or the tabs welded on the sides of the uh, rod, and got some Clecos holding it in place. We're going to use the holes for the rivet, so I'll probably use a rivet to attach this. Uh, maybe a nut and bolt. I haven't decided yet. We can always do that later. Uh, next step is to wrap that mesh on here and see if we get that to attach without too much drama. Okay, so I got the mesh cut to size and I ended up being about three rows past the edge and that's where I cut it all the way around. This gives me enough to wrap around and tuck it. And I think I can crimp this in with a pair of pliers and that's going to be just fine. I'll have to trim a little bit on the edges. So yeah, this is going to come out pretty good, I think. Okay, so I got the mesh installed and I just used a pair of pliers to crimp it around the edges and I use a screwdriver to kind of shove it up in there to kind of crimp it down. It's holding just fine. It's nice and flat and it's going to fit lovely on here. So that part is done. Just waiting to be mounted on the car. So that's basically what it's going to look like right there. And uh, there's going to be a piece of mesh that's going to go behind here for the actual grill. But there's going to get the number 10 painted on it just like that right there. So I think that represents that pretty well. So next up is to I gotta run to the hardware store and get a couple things, but I'm gonna weld this on here and do the same thing to this. So uh, that's next. Okay, so the grill protector is a radiator protector, whatever you wanna call it, it's mounted to the front of the car with Clecos. That looks pretty good. I'm pretty, very, very happy with that. Uh, I've got the windscreen welded and mounted, so the next thing to do is to put the mesh on that. So uh, let's get to it. Well, I think that's a reasonable facsimile of the 1913 Duesenberg uh, screen. I suppose it'll keep the rocks and mud and stuff out of your face. Um, I've got some brass fasteners on here. We're going to give this a little bit of a, I don't know, we're going to try our hands at making that look like it's brass or maybe dirty brass or painted over brass. Um, same thing maybe with this grill cover. Um, anyway, I think it's looking pretty cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, we'll have more to come soon. We'll probably next step is to tear this baby apart and start ready getting it ready for paint. So that'll be the next thing. Thanks for watching these videos. I really appreciate all your comments and questions. And uh, I know I've communicated with a few of you guys on sending you plans and parts lists and stuff like that. So if there's anything I can help you with, let me know. Otherwise, uh, keep on designing, keep on building, keep on racing, and keep on repeating. Design, build, race, repeat. Carry on, guys. Thanks.